Provisions to ensure equal pay for equal work have been in place for decades, but a step change has yet to happen. WTW provides employers with confidence that their pay and benefits are fair and equitable, not just today, but into tomorrow. Welcome to our latest video in the series on pay clarity and visibility. My name is Tamsin Schriederer. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague, Ava Jesmiatka. In this series, we remain focused on the EU Pay Transparency Directive and the lessons that we've been learning from helping clients prepare for the directive. I mean, Ava, almost from the word go, we said that communication engagement across stakeholders is going to be really important in preparing for the directive. I think that's where we want to focus today. So just thinking about you know, where companies are at the moment, what are you seeing is the current focus on stakeholder engagement? Yeah, so you're absolutely right, Thames. And so we indeed said from the beginning, your stakeholders are going to play a really key role in this. And what we have seen is that companies have really started to take action. And I would say the main focus has been almost on two areas. One is to first of all define what does pay transparency mean for us, but also what does our change management plan and our roadmap look like to deliver on that pay transparency ambition. And when it comes to answering that question of what does pay transparency mean, what we are seeing is that there are a couple of key questions to be answered there. Um, so especially for companies who have an international footprint, both within the EU and outside the EU, a big question is how global is this going to be for us? And to which extent are we going to go beyond compliance? Because you could partly say we just do what we have to do in the markets where we're being requested to disclose information. Um, what we are seeing is that most companies are going into a different direction. They are seeing this as something bigger than just being compliant. Um, but that has been a big focus. And what we're also seeing is that as they're looking into this to define that, they're already realizing that this is not just touching the world of rewards, but actually it's something where a broader group of stakeholders needs to be involved in. Um, so it's not uncommon to see that all different parts of the HR function are included. So colleagues from talent, colleagues from recruitment, talent acquisition, but also colleagues focused on diversity, equity and inclusion and um, colleagues from communication, so your corporate comms uh, who are playing a part in this as well to help really define what is going to be our narrative in relation to this. Thanks, Ava. So you've got a current focus is then defining your whole ambition on pay transparency at a global level and also at a regional level in Europe. And that will then involve many different stakeholders in defining that. Once that's been defined, then obviously it has to then go through an approvals process. Can you just talk a little bit about how easy it has been to engage the senior stakeholders in this and then gain support for that ambition and then also the plan? Yeah, yeah, so you're absolutely right. So that's indeed the natural sort of order of activities. So define that ambition, mm -hmm. define the plan, but then, like you said, make sure that we also have buy-in from our senior stakeholders. And in my experience, it's very much a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. And what you tend to see is that organizations who have already had a big focus on um, ESG, DEI, being a responsible employer, they find it easier to get the buy-in because it naturally links to those strategic agenda topics. Um, for other companies where it has been a bit more difficult, what they have actually found helpful is almost that within the EU, you have sort of that legal risk of non-compliance hanging above you. So in a very almost easy way, they can use that to say, look, if we don't do this, it's gonna cost us. And there is a risk that this will lead to, to legal risk, to um, reputational risks. Um, what helps in that stakeholder engagement part is making sure that you are able to show um, why is this important, why does mm -hmm. it matter. And what we're seeing there is that it's not just about compliance, but really almost educating or re-educating your stakeholders around 
the impact on broader employee engagement, um, the potential risk for reputation and uh, legal and financial um, um, implications. So it's going in with that broader picture of why it matters, but also being able to show already that you have a plan in place in terms of how you're going to address it, that definitely helps. Um, and I should probably also add to that, that we tend to see a difference between companies who are headquartered in Europe versus companies who are headquartered in, for example, the US. Yeah. Um, so making sure that you also help them understand that broader global uh, landscape will be important. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. From my experience, has been understanding where those senior stakeholders are coming from and then making sure that you're, when you create awareness, it's with that starting point in mind and then the why for the organisation or those stakeholders is going to vary very much on the context. I think the other thing that we've come across is sometimes for leaders it's their own personal position. So we're finding some leaders absolutely are committed to paying people fairly. It's fundamental to their leadership, whereas others leaders respond to this is a risk-based and it's much more about managing risk and understanding where your individual leaders are on, on, on that is, is important. So we've talked about senior stakeholders and you alluded at the start to the many different stakeholders involved. Can you just share a little bit more about what's also happening with other stakeholder groups at this moment? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so maybe also to highlight what we're seeing is that the more you dive into this, the more stakeholders you actually uncover and you yeah. realize how broad of a topic it is. And it's mm -hmm. basically literally touching everyone in the organization. But um, in terms of next big stakeholder group um, that are being addressed as a priority is a combination of, in essence, your local either HR business yeah. partners or your local comp and BEM partners, especially also in the EU, um, for various reasons. They, of course, will be directly impacted by the directive, so they need and want to know what is our plan, what is our position as a company. Um, but also, they are absolutely critical in this because they are the ones who are actually really closely connected to the business locally, and they are best equipped to say what is going to work here, but also very practically, how does actually reward work in our local market? Yeah. Um, so that's one uh, big group that we see that the focus is being um, uh, going to. And then what we are also already seeing is that companies are embarking on this journey to start thinking about their manager education. So we're actually seeing the first companies who are actually genuinely starting to do that. Mm -hmm. So they're rolling out education for their managers to equip them and start upskilling them around pay, pay transparency what is going to come in the future because ultimately they also need to be aware that their direct reports are going to have a lot more access to information and what we are seeing is that actually by doing that it's starting to uncover that actually um, the bigger change management piece is coming in here and it's highlighting to actually make behavioral change happen generally get managers to a point that they feel comfortable, but also that they have a sense of accountability for pay levels in their team. That is taking time. And I think, Ava, you, or you've come to this, haven't you, from just running a, a manager training session, and sometimes the HR function can be quite hold back on engaging with managers about pay. Can you just talk about actually the type of reaction you've had from the managers when you've gone in and, been, and spoken about this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So indeed, as you alluded to, we are literally doing this now uh, yeah. with a number of companies. And what is really interesting to see is that actually the response from managers in those sessions, when there is an essence being announced, we are going to introduce more pay transparency, mm -hmm. has been really positive. They're generally saying, this is the right direction to go into. We welcome this increased level of pay transparency and so will our employees because they've been asking for this. And, and when we were chatting just before, we, we talked about two companies who've just introduced pay ranges and the employee response to that. Can you just talk about the level of response yeah. to yeah. that? So I would say there are two big um, sort of themes coming out mm. of that. One is around um, the number of questions that companies get mm -hmm. once they start to um, post pay, uh, sort of publish pay ranges. Mm -hmm. It is 
a lot less but really a lot less than originally mm -hmm. anticipated. Mm -hmm. So the companies were both prepared to say, okay, now we're going to have this mm -hmm. flood of questions coming to us, mm -hmm. but actually that didn't happen. The other thing, what has been incredible uh, uh, to see is that actually from one of the companies, um, after they introduced pay ranges, mm -hmm. they shared that their employee engagement scores actually doubled. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's just, yeah. We've talked all the way through about how pay matters to employees, how being paid fairly is fundamental. And it's really good to have some hard data about the impact of when you are transparent, how favorable it is on engagement scores. Yeah, because how often do we hear from companies yeah. in order to get, coming back to where we started, mm -hmm. buy-in from senior stakeholders, yeah. I need to have some sort of ROI. So that's pretty much yes. your ROI um, right there for you. And then there's one group we haven't spoken about which really matters in the European context, which is the Works Council. And a question I'm getting at the moment is about should we be engaging with our Works Councils now? Has this come up and you know, what do you find the approach being taken at the moment? Yeah, so um, for most uh, companies, work councils are definitely mm -hmm. on, big on their radar. Mm -hmm. um, they are being included in the plans in terms of, in the com communication plans, they um, build in when are we going to engage with works councils. The majority of companies haven't really done that yet. Mm -hmm. There are a few, but more as a heads up, this is coming, this is on our radar but they haven't sort of fully engaged in all detail with the mm -hmm. Works Councils yet, but definitely something that has been flagged um, on, the, on the roadmap. Thanks, Ava. And then in, in closing, are there any other sort of tips that you would recommend to anybody um, watching us now about just overall engagement with stakeholders at the moment? Yeah, so for me, the biggest learning is um, making sure that you're prepared to be flexible and and actually do we dare to say agile yeah. uh, but i truly uh, mean that because what um, we're finding as we are working with companies on this is that um, as much as you can prepare and anticipate for the type of questions that managers for example might have every time you find new questions coming up so i think you need to make sure to build that into your plan to say we're going to start off with this for example, with education of managers, but let's be prepared that we need to further add to our roadmap and plan to make sure that we continue to accommodate questions that people have. Um, also make sure that you are prepared to accommodate for different learning styles and different learning preferences in the spirit of uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, and also uh, really approaches, I would say, from um, proper change management practices top of mind because at the end of the day this is really about making behavioral change happen um, and as mentioned it will take time and effort to to get there. Thank you Ava. If only it was as easy to um, prepare for the director as it was to summarize then I think we would be good. So thank you very much for all the insights you shared with us today and thank you all for joining us.